Okay, so we start our discussion of well, transition metals yet again by introducing a new version of acidity and basicity. I decided to wait until this lecture to talk about this because it seems a little bit more relevant. And um, we already talked about the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases, namely speaking, from the point of view of Irenaeus, if you have an H, you're an acid. If you have an OH, you're a base. And then you have the Brownstead Lowry definition, right, which tells you that if you donate an H, you're an acid. If you accept an H, you're a base. And then here comes the Lewis definition. Now, Lewis was a professor at Berkeley, and it's this very same Lewis that proposed the idea of Lewis structure. So it's kind of cool to see that, you know, he contributed more than just Lewis structures to chemistry. And, you know, he was actually a professor, you know, here in California. All right. So the idea is that Lewis looks at the reactivity of acids and bases from a different point of view. Instead of focusing on the protons, he decides to focus on the lone pairs of electrons. And so from his point of view, an acid is anything that accepts electrons. And anything that donates electrons is what he considers a base. And it's a different way of looking at the same thing. But by introducing the idea of the lone pairs to define acidity and basicity, uh, he basically extends the full scope of what can be considered an acid and what can be considered a base. Specifically for the acids, not only do you have substances that have H's being acids, but also metals can now behave as potential acids and molecules that have uh, electron deficiency like boron can also behave as acids and of course for the bases you still encompass everything that the Lowry France definition uh, included which is anything that has uh, long pairs of electrons freely which are ready to be donated to anything that has an H but at the same time anything that is now being donated in terms of electrons to metals or anything else other than H can be still considered a base. So um, yeah, we actually extend the scope quite vastly and probably to the full extent by looking at it from the Lewis definition. So when you think back again, you in terms of your coordinative covalent compounds, right? In this case, the hexa-aqua complex that forms when you have a naked ion, like in this case, manganese 2 plus, the water is technically donating the electrons. And notice how I'm drawing these arrows here. The tail of the arrow starts at the lone pair of electrons and the head of the arrow ends at the electron deficient center or the center that's accepting electrons. So that means that manganese 2 plus is your acid and water is behaving as a base. And in the process, you form, of course, your hexa-aqua complex, which is what we call an acid-base adduct. Now, similarly, uh, you could have uh, aluminum chloride reacting with sodium chloride, in which case the chloride, which is the anion, right, can attack the aluminum center, which is electron deficient. Because aluminum is accepting electrons, it is the acid by definition. And the chloride, which is donating the electrons, is the base. And it's kind of interesting to look at it this way because you have never thought of chloride as, you know, acting like a base. But from the point of view of the Lewis definition, it's definitely doing just that. And so you form this particular complex, the tetrachloroaluminate complex. And as I was saying, both the manganese as well as the aluminum complexes are known as acid-base adducts because they contain both the acid and the base within it. Um, another one that's uh, typically discussed in the second part of general chemistry is uh, magic acid. And this is a combination of hydrofluoric acid with antimony pentafluoride. And uh, this is actually kind of interesting because if you think about it, the lone pairs of the fluoride in HF are being donated to the antimony site. So technically speaking, HF behaves as a base even though it has that H to begin with, right? It's because of how it's acting with its electrons. Antimony is the acid 
and here you're forming your acid base addict, right? So now you have a hexafluoro complex, which is rather acidic. And this is one of the super acids that, that we know of, to the point where we call it magic acid. But as it turns out, it is not the strongest acid that we have to date, but it is up there. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop the video right here, and on the next video, we will talk about metal acidity.